What's going on y'all? Random Thoughts here. And today we're gonna to take a look at how I defined SRE, DevOps, and traditional IT um, at an organization uh, while getting the executive buy-in for, for these roles. So let's just dive right into it. All right. So I went ahead and created this video because I see a lot of conversations out there, and this is over the past couple of years, this isn't anything new, around SRE versus DevOps and these these kinds of conversations, even even IT and like sysadmin and all that, just like, I guess, titles as a whole in general and the whole recruiter-driven aspect of things, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> so that's, that's that piece, but I, I wanted to really take the time to define, or really how I defined these roles at an actual organization. So this is what I did, and this is how I got executive leadership buy-in on, on, you know, this is what IT is, this is what ops is, and this is what SRE is for a given organization. So maybe we can learn something from each other, and if you did it differently, which you more than likely have, uh, leave a comment below, you know, let's, dis let's discuss, uh, because the, the main thing that I've noticed uh, from every organization is that every title is like different and varying aspects. So I was tasked with defining these because I started to one of the organizations that I was working at was completely new. So this was a completely new thing. I mean, we did some of these kinds of things like day to day, just without really without the title. Uh, and, and we're looking to define each of these and, and really just overall just mature the processes across the board you know it's i guess ultimately it's, it's growing pains uh with with the size of the organization so how i define these and how i got buy-in so let's just dive right into that so right away the sre role at a high level is production focused so i wanted this to be something that was completely hugely focused in production initially in this in a huge emphasis on incident response here initially because this was something that for this particular organization was completely lacking uh, they lacked any real response time like any metrics around that and just the whole <laughs> the whole incident management process in general you'd be surprised but this is uh yeah so sre so incident response observability capacity planning latency performance Total automation, uh, just maintaining metrics for like various syncs each month and quarterly goals and all that kind of thing. Uh, chaos engineering, fault injection, um, and then just internal advocacy, uh, which ultimately means uh, kind of speaking for SRE as a whole, kind of uh, getting that adoption, working with multiple teams, uh, engineering teams, product teams, whatever it might be, uh, and really just getting that buy-in because uh, you, you you need that communication aspect because if you're going to go with SLOs or you know service level objectives. You, you definitely need that collaboration aspect. Communication is massively important, if not one of the most important pieces here. So that is SRE. And as I had mentioned, this would be defined in so many different ways of the organizations. Uh, the larger the organization gets, you might even have totally, well, just in general, you might have totally different titles that encompass something like SRE. So like Facebook and Amazon, they, they don't, I don't believe they use the term SRE at all. I think it's like infrastructure engineering or uh, something like that. So <laughs> they, they, they use different titles for these kinds of things. Uh, SRE is absolutely a Google uh, specific title. And as a result, it's very much recruiter driven. A lot of smaller or medium sized organizations, they see these kinds of roles like SDET and all that kind of thing, and they, they adopt them. Uh, because the big companies have already kind of solved the problems and it's a lot easier for, uh, for these smaller companies to kind of, kind of adopt these kinds of roles, more so like these specializations. So anyways, that's, that's uh, what I had written down for SRE in all at a high level, once again, uh, with that, that main focus initially on uh, incident management. Uh, if we scroll over here to ops, so ops, once again, just like one of those, one of those weird titles, sysadmin, operations, sometimes, once again, you see DevOps, but it's you know debated whether it should be a title or not. Uh, but for us, it should be manages and creates infrastructure, uh, manages and creates the various VBCs, so very much AWS type stuff, uh, public cloud kind of thing. Uh, it tracks cost and should look for uh, ways to save on costs, of course. 
Uh, this is a big one. So as opposed to just like throwing money at problems, uh, managing the get process, uh, shared effort. I, I kind of have that over here mentioned too. It just is just a cross organization. Uh, manages and creates the uh, release process. So this is just the entire release pipeline uh, in general. Uh, it measures the release frequency. Uh, so one of those metrics that you can, I mean, once again, debatable, whether or not you want to uh, measure things like that. Uh, and then just maintains infrastructure. Uh, and once again, ideally as code. So you would manage the infrastructure with code. Uh, it's a big one. Uh, and over here, IT. So this is more like traditional IT. Um, and then this, I kind of wrote this down and IT addresses in office issues from a desktop support perspective. So people having issues, usually blocking issues too. Somebody can't use their, their laptop or, or computer, whatever their device is, uh, they're not able to work. So that's a big, big problem. Uh, and this, this stretches to remote as well. So, uh, remote troubleshooting and all of that, which is in my opinion, very complicated <laughs> if you're dealing with, uh, you know, just, just various, uh, end users and all of that. Uh, handles onboarding and offboarding, manages SSO across the organization, uh, addresses desktop support uh, as they come in, so just like a ticketing system. Uh, handles internal ad network for the office, contributes or creates automation via Salesforce, etc. And this is just you know whatever CRM your company's using. I mean, automation is kind of key. And this honestly, like, oftentimes you'll see this in like more engineering uh, focused organizations. So that's just something to keep in mind. There, it's a little bit different for this for this organization. Uh, assist team requests for integration efforts. So like think maybe an example would be like SSO for New Relic, something like that. You create a ticket, they kind of handle that process. Uh, once again, this is different organizations. Oftentimes I see like security uh, kind of handling this kind of, kind of thing. Um, but we have the shared effort piece. So this is a big one because I feel as though, especially like the smaller the company, like the more hats you're gonna wear. It's just, you know, it's just what it is. Uh, and we have some shared effort here. So DNS just in general, like I feel like everyone should be kind of aware of route 50 or route 53. Uh, this is a huge overlap between, and there is a massive overlap between SRE and ops in a lot of ways, uh, big time in my opinion, this, this being a big one, because just going off on a tangent really quickly with SRE and ops, like SRE should absolutely, and that's what makes SRE kind of difficult in my opinion is because just the amount of knowledge you in this this kind of even falls into kind of like the whole you build it you maintain it kind of thing uh, but once again that's that's under debate <laughs> and other organizations kind of handle this differently but uh the whole knowledge of infrastructure the whole knowledge of, of software microservices so an understanding of and it's imp almost impossible to have an understanding of every microservice so ideally you have uh, like various teams within SRE and they have an understanding of a particular maybe group of services and that's kind of stretching it a bit. Um, but that shared overlap between ops and SRE uh, is, is infrastructure. So I feel as the shared effort is hugely between SRE and ops when it comes to things like uh, like infrastructure, public clouds, infrastructure as code. Uh, Kubernetes is a big one lately. That's this for a lot of organizations that are just kind of handling monolith to microservice transformation and all that. So back into shared effort. Uh, so suggestions on improvement. This is across across the board. Any and this kind of falls outside of these roles as well. Like really, if, if someone sees some kind of improvement. And if they have the time to do that, or if they're just kind of going through their day to day and they see something that needs to be improved, uh, I feel as though they should mention it. You know, that's a big one, especially uh, at, at this particular organization. Uh, it's it's very helpful. It's just helping other teams, helping other people. And it's not to be annoying. It's just like if they, someone sees something, like, like even from a security perspective, it's always worth mentioning, uh, I, I, as I feel at least. Uh, and this goes in with uh, yeah security improvements. So if you see something strange, you know there's some CIDR range that's that's open to everything. It's <laughs> it's absolutely worth mentioning. Uh, so issue communication between teams. So if a problem comes up in ops, say, say for example, um, there should be great communication. That's that's a, it should be a given. But it's one of those things that is worth mentioning. Uh, so communication is massive across everything. Uh, so assist each other. Uh, will assist each team to avoid throwing money at problems. So something I've seen in the past is like vertically scaling, you know, when we should uh, potentially refactor, or like look into another solution. Uh, so something like that. And then uh, helping each other out as needed. So this kind of goes into skill sharing. So if there's some cool article, <laughs> post it. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of how I feel about that kind of thing. 
so yeah this is how i defined it um the title thing is of course like one of those strange confusing pieces and that's really why i did this in general too like i wanted to help the organization understand each of these roles in the context of that organization uh, as best as as best as i could and i'm sure people will debate some of this as well and that's perfectly fine let's talk uh, just leave the comments below um, and then let's learn from each other so hope you uh, enjoy this and take care